Do you want to level up your drums so that they sound like this? Instead of this. Then keep watching, because I'll show you how to get a sound like this from any source. Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use JST Maximizer to fit drum shells into a mix. Even though Maximizer was originally designed for mastering, we quickly discovered that the saturation and dynamic controls are awesome for mixing as well. And what's the mix element that needs the most compression and saturation? Drum shells. We're going to cover multiband clipping, harmonic excitement, and how this all fits in the context of a full mix. This is going to be a ton of content, so let's get started. This video is going to use a pretty standard drum routing setup. Each mic is going to be routed to either a shells bus or a cymbal bus, and those two buses are going to go into a drum bus. We're going to focus mainly on the shells bus, but we'll include a few tips for the cymbal bus as well. Each drum mic is already going to be EQ'd and clipped to cut out boxy frequencies and control peaks. When controlling the balance for a drum shell bus, we're looking for two things, really consistent kicks and a strong snare. Compression and clipping is an easy way to level out the kicks, but the snare might require a little automation, especially if there are ghost notes. Snare drums are notorious for being all over the place with volume. A common approach to prepping drums is to paste over the weak hits with stronger ones. Layer in a sample for even more consistency. After that's done, automate the volume so that the loudest snare hits are equally impactful. Gate out the toms so that the shell bus processing doesn't just bring out a ton of noise. This can be done manually by cutting the waveform automatically with a gate or with a MIDI triggered gate. And if you want more information about how to do that with MIDI, then check out this video. You could also use a plugin like Tominator, available now at joeysturgistones.com. Awesome, these drums are ready to get processed together. Okay, we've processed the individual tracks to get the maximum impact, so this step is all about control. Let's start with some light EQ. Listen for frequencies that build up when the drums play at once. Okay, now let's tackle the dynamics. The mid-range and high-end gets really hyped on drum performances. This happens because the kick, snare, and toms all have transient information that overlap. The low end of the kick and the toms also stack on top of each other, which makes the drums feel boomy if it gets too loud. To solve these issues, let's use the three-band clipper mode in JST Maximizer. That's gonna allow more control over the volume going into the clipper. The sub definitely needs some clipping, but too much will create audible distortion. Perfect, now for the mids, a slight boost will help. And finally, the top end. Let's try crushing these since they're the most dynamic. Yep, that's more exciting and more controlled. Now let's decide the overall level. Because of where the threshold is set, Adjusting the volume of each band was enough to introduce some clipping. And from here, increasing the maximize knob controls how much clipping is applied to the whole thing. It increases the level of the entire performance, so the bands that we boosted will have more clipping applied than the bands that were reduced. This is a good stage to enable the auto trim knob. This makes the output volume equal to the input. Normally for mastering, this is a tool that I use to check how the maximizer affects the transients without being distracted by the increase in volume. After the right sound is achieved, I'll turn it off and give the mix its full volume. In this case though, you might want to try leaving it on, especially if the rest of the mix is already balanced to the drums. Try it out and let us know what you think. Anyway, the maximize knob controls how glued the shells are to each other. A helpful tool for checking the dynamic range of the kit is the dynamics meter. This shows the RMS value after maximizing. A really dynamic performance will be around here. and a totally locked and tight sound is gonna be up here. Where this lands is something that will change from mix to mix. It's good to have an idea of where you wanna end up when you start. The last thing I wanna cover with full frequency clipping is the character knob. This will adjust the curve that the clipper applies. 
All the way to the left is hard clipping that instantly cuts the peaks over the threshold. Turning it to the right is more subtle and lets more of the peaks through. A medium value is usually the best starting point for drums. If the effect is too extreme, even after adjusting the character, dial back the mix knob. Okay, so the entire shell bus has been controlled. Now let's add some excitement and texture with saturation. Maximizer's saturation modes are located inside the sauce menu. For a drum performance like this, I like the excite mode. This brings a little more life to the drums and adds some nice high frequency detail. Just listen for yourself. The last step to processing the drum shells is to adjust the stereo width. Depending on the samples used, the miking techniques, and the processing applied, the sub can end up being wider than you want. To solve this, just turn up the mono bass knob. This sums all of the stereo information into mono up to a chosen frequency. This could be used from the kick all the way up to the snare fundamental. A good starting point is to set this above the kick sub, but below the tom fundamental. This is because the toms are usually going to be panned, and this low end helps give them definition in the stereo field. A good way to find this point is to solo the kick and the lowest tom, and then see where their fundamental note hits on an analyzer. Cymbals don't usually need a lot of clipping, so I'm just going to put JST Maximizer on the cymbal bus and do some light processing. Now let's head over to the master bus and see how much easier it is to get a loud, clean master with these drums controlled. And that's it! The peaks have been controlled while maintaining the transient information. Keep this in mind when you want a drum sound that hits hard but isn't overly dynamic. If you want to take total control of your drum shells, download your 14-day free trial of JST Maximizer at joeysturgistones.com. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.